guys, how's it going? Happy Tuesday. Cheers to you. I just said happy Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Yesterday, I feel like my tripod is crooked. Um, yesterday was Monday. I shot a vlog in the morning, uploaded it, it went live. Now today is Tuesday and I'm shooting a vlog and I'm uploading it and it's going to go live on Tuesday. Why is this such a big deal? Many of you that maybe are new to watching my video are like, what is her problem? Trust me. <laughs> Watch more than one and you'll know what. There's so many problems over here. I'm the reason God invented therapy. Uh, that's good. Anyway, part of, oh, hey, there's a squirrel. Um, part of everything that I'm focusing on is making time for me and kind of, well, not kind of, focusing on getting my life back because for those of you that are new here, you might not realize this, but you know, a big part of what's been my personal problem in, in just having really quality of life, but also certainly in reaching my fitness goals, um, you know, the reason I've been plateauing and not losing, you know, staying kind of just like this in my fitness journey as far as fat loss or weight loss, whatever you want to call it, is because I don't make myself a priority. And I've founded this great company of which I'm very proud. Ooh, strategic product placement right here on the boo. Um, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't even realize I was gonna, anyway. Um, I've really put myself, lip balm, sorry. I've really put myself last and I've continued to do so. And um, you can't, you're not effective that way. You guys know I'm all about the metaphor. I'm all about analogies and metaphors when I'm telling stories. I probably really annoy people because I'm always like, it's kind of like a cupcake. And they're like, I thought we were talking about profit and loss. What's going on here? Why are we talking about cupcakes? But who was I telling the other day? I think I was texting Carla about this. Um, and I, I just, as I've had many like moments of clarity the past two or three weeks, in getting really excited for my new training program and my new diet um, and the fact that someone's monitoring me more importantly um, I realized that this treadmill metaphor analogy whatever is so perfect at describing what I need to remind myself about work and also well it's really more so a fitness um, it's a fitness analogy or fitness metaphor to use Analogy is a story, metaphor is a specific, so I'm probably saying analogy. Anyway, I haven't had enough caffeine. The thing I've realized about what I've done with, with work and, and how my, my problem is I get up every day in the past, I've, I would get up every day, I, I'd get my breakfast, I'd get my coffee, I'd, I'd go into my office and I'd start working and then what would happen is I'd have the best of intentions. I have the, I've, I've had all the desire in the world. And you guys know, I love working out. I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, yeah, I have to go on the treadmill. Like, I actually have to tell, I, I actually have to have Todd tell me, Kelly, right now you are not allowed to do extra cardio because I actually like working out. I really do. But what I've done the past year, probably two years or more, especially since I founded the company, is I get up in the morning, I'll get all dressed and ready to go in the gym, and then I go in my office and I start working. And it's a good problem of mine, but it's also a bad problem. I like to address things right away, and I like to take care of them right away. So if I go in there and I start seeing emails that upset me, annoy me, piss me off, or there's some kind of fire that I have to put out, or somebody is asking for something, I feel that I have to accommodate them immediately. And that can be a good attitude to have, because you're not ignoring people, but it can be a bad attitude to have because there's always going to be a mountain of that coming in. And I've known this, but I allow myself to get sucked in there and I put everything else last. I don't grocery shop. So then when I come out here and I, I'm rushing because I need to eat something, then, you know, the food that I am buying is different. I don't have a lot of stuff in my pantry. If you look at my pantry, I don't have boxed rice. I don't have canned food. Everything I buy is fresh. It requires me to go to the store more often. And I don't, or I haven't been. I haven't been planning. I haven't been going to the store. So then I'm rushing in here. It's lunchtime. 
I don't have enough food made. There were days when I was having eggs three times a day because that's all, excuse me, that's all I had in, in my refrigerator and it was either that or I was rushing out and there were many times when I was rushing out and I was getting fast food and here's the thing people, I have no reason to not be honest with you and I think those of you that have been watching me for a while, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm even more honest and forthcoming about my thoughts, my you know, my weaknesses, whatever, because I'm hoping that my weaknesses and what I'm learning and how I'm getting past them can help those of you that have the same problems. When I tell you that I have gone for fast food, it's not me going, oh, I'm gonna cheat and have fast food. It's not me going, oh, what I really want. I don't wanna have chicken. I really wanna have McDonald's. I love a McDonald's fish sandwich, okay? That's my thing. Don't judge me. Um, and don't even get into the whole fast food thing, okay? What I'm saying is the reason over the past, whatever, three or four months, if I've gone to get fast food, is not because I have a craving and I want it. It's because it's eight o'clock at night and maybe I haven't eaten since breakfast and then I'm running out and getting freaking McDonald's. Now, that is so unhealthy on so many levels. I am not, however, talking about making a statement about McDonald's or Arby's or any, any fast food or even Panera, anything like that, okay? You can eat unhealthy or inappropriately for your goals anywhere. You can get fat eating a lot of fruit, okay? It's all about what's right for your body. My point is, it has become so crystal clear to me. Even though I knew it, I really have just seen it, especially last week, you guys, when I, when I had that day and here I am rushing out of the house at 1.40 for a two o'clock appointment and hadn't eaten since breakfast, didn't have anything with me, and I'm, you know, and realistically, like that day, there have been so many days like that, you guys, and that's shameful. You, you can't complain about your results if you look back and you've gotta be able to look at yourself really hard. Don't, you cannot allow yourself to whine and bitch and moan about your body if you can't objectively look at yourself and take yourself apart, sorry, you, you have to. You have to look at yourself and go, oh, really? I, I will tell you this, as, as I don't wanna say, I, I'm not frustrated. I, I, I have a different attitude about myself now. Um, I'm able to really objectively look at myself and, and with a little bit of kindness and go, okay, this is what I don't like when I see in the mirror. This is what is annoying to me. It's annoying to me that paper towel um, somebody said, you know, a lot of people, women, a as you get older, you tend to gain weight like a, th like a paper towel. It's like a layer, and, and you just keep getting another layer and a la another layer. And that's why some people, if you gain weight that way, um, it's harder to notice if you're not paying attention, if you're not weighing yourself, if you're not measuring yourself, if, you <clears throat> if you've gone through a period like I did when my hormones first went wacky and I had this horrible skin condition and I spent the better part of six months in my house because I'd lost my job too and so I was you know working from home and I was in my sweats and my robe all the time and I wasn't working out because my skin hurt it was stinging and I had these you know sores all over my back and my my chest and my neck and so I was in my sweats and my robe all the time really hard to notice that you're gaining weight when you're in your sweats and your robe all the time and you know you, and then of course you're depressed and you're not getting sleep and so you're stressed so then you've added like the trifecta of hi welcome to weightgain.com <laughs> it's just kind of like really annoying but if you can just step back and look at where you are and, and look at what you've done have you really i'm I'm just sharing this with you guys, and I'm glad that I'm, I'm gonna vlog every day if I can. There's no reason I can't. Um, I'm really in a bad mood today. I'm really not, and I had a kick butt first training session yesterday. I'll tell you about that in a second. I'm already at 10 minutes. But I'm in a really bad mood today. I'm just telling you, this is me in a bad mood. I got up, I put my clothes on, had a great workout yesterday, um, and I think that probably I'm sure Aunt Flo is on the way, that bitch. But I'm in a really bad mood. There's been some things in, in business that have really gotten on my last nerve. People are so impatient. I kind of feel like, 
It's my refrigerator making noises. Sometimes with, with my work, I, I feel like it's, you ever watch one of those horror movies where, you know, like there's just a bunch of, I don't know, trolls or evil creatures that are chasing somebody and <laughs> they're shutting the door and there's just a bunch of like evil creatures like gremlins behind the door and they're all like <laughs> that's kind of how I feel every day I just have so many people that are like how come you haven't back to me I, 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 I want this I want this can you do this help Kelly can you do this and all the time and there's like a million voices scratching and crawling how come I don't have this and it's just like this constant I mean, it's like the second I open that door, imagine silence, and then you open the door and you think, maybe it's going to be quiet in there, maybe, just maybe. And then you open the door and it's like, and I just want to get away. I just want to make the voices stop. Anyway, so I'm in a bad mood and I feel fat. I'm not going to lie. I feel really, really, really fat, which is silly. Um, I think I probably am feeling this way because of fluctuations, but I think I also feel this way because I told you guys over the weekend I had gluten and I felt bad, like my stomach felt bad and there's that mental thing. I think we all get that. There's a mental thing of you go on a bender or whatever, and I didn't go on a bender, but I had more than, it wasn't just like one meal, like I had pizza, what else did I have? Oh, my dad's, um, yeah, the, um, my dad's, whatever it's called, nut roll that he makes. So I had nut roll, I had pizza. Oh, that's the other thing. So it was like a lot of carbs. I went out to lunch with my mom, who's doing very well, by the way. I'll get back to that next vlog. Um, so I went out to lunch with my mom. We went to Corner Bakery. Hadn't been to Corner Bakery, bakery in forever, and I had my old favorite sandwich, which is um, a tomato, basil, roasted red pepper, balsamic vinaigrette sandwich. Is that bad in and of itself? No, but it's like white bread, all the stuff that I just don't eat anymore. So that was like a treat. I had more than several treats. And I think just mentally having several foods that I don't normally have, and I was fully aware, I wasn't binging or anything. I think that's probably, probably, probably why I'm feeling this way today. But the thing is, you guys, it's days like today that you have to literally go and have days like this. I'm not going to reach my goal. I'm not going to be, you know, 20 pounds lighter in, in five days. You're going to have to suck it up and know that I'm putting money in the bank and it's going to compound the interest and it's going to grow. And I can't give up. I can't do what I've done in the past, over the past several two years. I'm not making a lot of sense today. It's really early in the morning. Um, several two years. Anyway. I'm fired up about this because I, I got in my workout clothes and I went and feeling pissy and I took my my um, mirror and I was looking at my rear view in the um, in the bathroom and I got all pissed off because I'm like oh my god I'm sure I've gained 10 pounds well first of all no I haven't second of all um, I'm in a bad mood so it's that whole philosophy that I have of what you look for you're, you're gonna find if you go into the bathroom mirror and you're you're deciding that you feel fat today and you look you're gonna find yourself looking more fat we it's a mind trick okay you what you look for you will find if you go in there and do what you should do which is usually what I do I take my mirror and I'm like I'm going to look better than ever before then you look and you go oh wait look you know underneath my bra I have less fat here my hips look smaller whatever you, you'll find what you're looking for. You've got to get yourself, you've got to find ways, I find ways, you find ways, of getting over these bad moments because I personally believe like bad days like today when you feel down on yourself and you're pissed off, it is so easy, it is so easy to go forget it, I'm not working out today, forget it. And then, you know, certainly I don't do this anymore, but I know in the past, probably I'd say last year, really good this year about um, changing my approach to, to food but I I certainly know there were there were times in the years past recent years past where if I'd have a day like this I'd get pissed and then I go you know what forget it I'm not gonna work out today and I I'd, I'd take my workout clothes off I put on my sweats and my robe which was like this comfort thing in more ways than one and then I'd be like I'm going to Burger King forget it I'm gonna go to Burger King I'm gonna sit and I'm gonna watch TV and I'm just gonna be upset and tomorrow I'll start over 
How many of you have done that? Okay, you got to be real with yourself and you have to, you know, look at where you are and go, okay, how many times have I done that? It might be that kind of a thing that you've done, or it could be something like myself. How many times this year have I talked about this? I'm not grocery shopping. I get up in the morning and I go into my damn office and I don't make time for myself. That's why I should be. I could have been reaching the end of the year having reached my goals. I'm not, I'm over it, okay? But it's no one else's fault but my own. And the reason that that's good and the reason that that is an actual opportunity instead of something that I'm gonna get depressed about is when I take a step back and I look at where my body is right now, I'm turning 44 next year, okay? <sighs> I think it's gonna be the year of Botox. Maybe some of this. Um, but when I, I look at where I am and I realize oh, allergies, um, I've made great progress this year. I see, I can objectively look at my body and see where I have weight to lose, you know, where like my legs have leaned out more still, you know, the, the, the rest of the area that is like my main project is my core. It's that paper towel thing, people. I gained weight in areas that I've never gained it in my entire life with this perimenopause thing. Anyway, when you can take a step back and realize everything that you have allowed to get in your way, then it's cool, it's kind of cool. It can be depressing because you're like, damn! But then it can be cool because you realize, holy crap, what's gonna happen? If I've come this entire year and I have been this inconsistent in my eating, meaning so many days like that Monday where I'd eat breakfast and have something random late at night. So, you know, like Mike Purcell said, he's like, your body has no idea what's coming and when it's coming. Okay, when I realize how much I have been ridiculously inconsistent in my eating um, and how random my workouts have been, sure, there have been a lot of times where I have started. I'm great at starting. I've started and I've gone two weeks and done really great. And then what do I do? And it's no one else's fault but my own. I can't bitch and moan about something that I have the power to change. Excuse me. So I have allowed work to get in my way. And sometimes I've made that choice. I've made that choice to say, um, dry skin. Um, I've made that choice to be like, okay, this is, we're really swamped. And sometimes, sometimes I don't have as much of a choice. I'm a startup, you know, I've got four people that work in my company. So if there's 20 proposals that have to get done and nobody else can do them, sometimes I have to make that time, okay? But I have repeatedly put myself last. I have repeatedly made the same um, issues, issues, I've repeatedly given in to, you know, I'm not making time to grocery shop, I'm not making time to go to the gym, I'm not making time for myself, I'm exhausting myself, and it's the treadmill analogy that I probably started to talk about 16 minutes ago. Think about yourself running on a treadmill, okay? If, if you, what I've been doing with work is equivalent to getting on a treadmill and expecting that I can run seven days straight without stopping. Inevitably, you're gonna start off strong and you're gonna be running and you, can, you might be going like Dutch, 10 miles an hour, or like me, five to six miles an hour. Um, and you're gonna start off running really strong, right? And doing a really great job. But after X amount of time, in somebody like Dutch's case, he'd be running for maybe two days at 10 miles an hour and still be like, hey, this is great, can someone get me a coffee? Me, <laughs> I'd finish running at about 45 minutes going, um, at some point, you won't be able to keep up that 10 mile an hour or six mile an hour or four mile an hour pace and you're gonna have to slow down. And then you're gonna have to slow down more and then you're gonna have to slow down more. Because if you wanna keep moving on that treadmill, you know, you're not gonna have that energy, right? So it, it's just inevitably, you're destined to slow down, slow down, slow down. So you're not making as much progress distance wise as you want. It's the same, that's exactly what I've been doing with work because I have found myself that when I do, when I do break away, when I do actually give myself permission over the weekend, like a mad woman to actually enjoy and maybe go out to a movie with my friends and not work for like two days, maybe with just you know a little bit of work thrown in there. 
Do you know how much more fresh I am when I come back on Monday? Do you know how much faster I do my work? Do you know how much more focused and energized and excited to do my work than I am? It's a simple thing. It's called getting off the treadmill and saying, I'm gonna, when I'm on the treadmill, I'm gonna sprint, I'm gonna do intervals, I'm gonna do inclines, and then I'm gonna get off and I'm gonna refresh myself and rest. This is what I'm realizing about work, you guys. That's why it's gonna be easier for me to take time off because there's always gonna be work to go back to. There's always gonna be kids, there's always gonna be your job, there's always gonna be something. You have to give yourself permission and understand it's okay. That's always gonna be there. Whether I stay in there 18 hours a day and slave and get tired and get slower and slower and take nine times longer to do something than it would normally take me, you know, a third of that time, or I totally made up, that didn't make any sense, you know what I mean. Give yourself permission to take time for yourself because you're doing two things. You're giving yourself the ability to decrease your stress, reach your goals. In my case, go to the gym, grocery shop for myself, cook for myself, actually have something in my refrigerator other than eggs and cilantro. <laughs> and then you're, you're refreshing yourself so that when you do go back to work or you do go back to whatever it is that's been draining you in the past, you're fresher and you're going to do a better job. All of this has just become crystal clear to me lately. And that's why I'm excited because I haven't done any of this stuff. So imagine if I've some of you guys have written me recently and you're like, you look really good in your videos. And I'm thinking, number one, I'm flattered and I'm glad you said that, but I almost don't know why, because I almost don't know why I would look at Eminent better because I really have not been kicking ass the past couple of months. Can you imagine what I'm going to see and what you're going to see like over the next 12 weeks? That's why I'm so excited. And that's why I encourage you guys to be really objective with yourself look at yourself critically you have to do it stop blaming work stop blaming hormones stop blaming whatever those are all factors but pretty much i guarantee that almost all of us if you really look hard at yourself and really look hard at how you've eaten and how you've been working out and, and what you've done you've probably eaten a lot more than you thought or, or maybe inconsistent and bad like me where it's all over the place and you've probably worked out a lot less than you think or, or you can be like me and think you've been weight training and then you're like, wait a second, all I do is run? It's snowing out. Um, I'm at 22 minutes, so I'm gonna shut up. Hopefully my bad mood rant is, is helping you and hopefully I maybe made a point here. Um, but all that said, I have to go answer my text. Um, but I want you guys to have a good day. I'm so excited it just started snowing. I'm so excited. See, good things can happen when you get in a bad mood and you just put the bad mood out there and let other people handle it. And now I'm just gonna go drink my coffee and be in a better mood. And this is the, my other um, Park City cup because my black one was broken. I gotta go.